The graduates of Wing 223 have survived a tough 19-week course at Police College, and they've proven themselves by becoming constables in the New Zealand Police. Now in their last week, they're preparing for active duty. I think that you can just go out there and think, oh yeah, sweet as, I've got all this power, do whatever I like, think again. I think they've tried to make it as real as they possibly can here, but it's never going to be as real as what it's going to be when we're out there. But it's not just the recruits who are being prepared. The college is also opening its doors to their partners and families. And that's the, the stay good is zero cars. <laughs> the idea being to preempt some of the changes they're likely to see. Now their loved ones have successfully become police officers. So the bonds that have been forged here are very strong. You need to reattach those strings that you had perhaps before they left. And it's going to take some time. Rebecca Moxon's family are familiar with the drill. They've already seen two generations in the force. Dad just loves the thought of me going to the police. I'm pretty sure he does. Yeah, see the smile and he starts, oh, you know, when I was in the police force type thing, you know. Though there are some details Rebecca's dad neglected to share. I'm probably more scared now than I was at the beginning of the course. Because now we've been exposed to a little bit and then we've been told and we've seen what we're going to have to deal with. And having not really come to face that yet, it's, it's quite daunting. Guiding them through this process have been the unsung heroes of Police College, their section sergeants. You've got the potential to become an excellent uh, uh, police officer. <laughs> Thank you for being a good sergeant no, and getting us welcome. through. My sergeant, he's just a great person to be around and, you know, you can always go to him. Any problems? Very keen, very confident young lady. Hoping to join the Armed Defenders squad, Karen Thompson's last profession was very different, to say the least. I was a qualified hero makeup artist. Though it was a speeding offence which led her to police college. I was pulled over by a sergeant and given a ticket, and I saw him a few days later and he became a client of mine. Do you have any final comments you wish to make? No, apart from you're the best, Sarge. After being invited out on patrol as an observer, Karen was hooked. It was awesome. Yeah, lots of action and lots of things happening and no two jobs are exactly the same. Yeah, welcome. I'll give you a hug. <laughs> With graduation just a day away, tonight the recruits must attend a formal dinner to celebrate their success. Though first they're required to learn a thing or two about etiquette. Tonight is our celebration and the way that we celebrate it here at the Royal New Zealand Police College is to organise a formal dinner. When does it start for you? It starts for you at 4.30 this afternoon. From that time on, you will monitor your fluid intake. <laughs> For a very good reason, I might add. You will be dressed in your number one uniform. You will put your epaulets onto your tunic. So at about five to seven, Mr. Vice will ding his donger. You will say in a dignified voice. Ladies and gentlemen, dinner will be served in five minutes. It's code for you, go for a wee. Because the minute you pass through into the dining hall, you will not leave to go to the loo even if your teeth are floating. Ladies and gentlemen, dinner is now served. Despite the ritual and tradition, tonight is all about the recruits and recognising their achievements. This is a pat on the back and a thank you very much, and we're all colleagues together. After so many weeks of hard work, for Mike Henwood tonight also means he'll soon be home. Before I came to college, the longest I'd been away from home, from Hamilton, was about nine days. So uh, here I've been away from home for six, seven weeks at a time, which is different for me. Though before heading back to the Waikato, his loved ones will be joining him for his big day. My parents and girlfriend will be here when I graduate, and it's just as much for them as it is for me. The recruits are served a four-course meal, and while it's time to celebrate, it's also a time to reflect. Being in my stage of my life, you know, I'm 33, becoming institutionalised, I guess, it's something that was uh, always going to take a bit of getting used to, getting back into study patterns, things like that. I might go for one of those, many. Big learning experience, big learning curve. I got put in situations that I was way out of my comfort zone in. 
you're just busy all the time and you're studying and, and there's just so many things to do down here and so many things to complete and your mind's just so focused on what you have to do. I'm sure we'll look back in time, we're going to think, hell, we thought that was pressure. <laughs> Amazing feeling to finish now and uh, we'll feel like kings of the world for a couple of days and then we, we start at the bottom again. But tonight's formality will be nothing compared to the grand finale, the graduation parade. The last day of police college has finally arrived for Wing 223. In a few hours, the main hall will be filled with dignitaries and family members. Being away from them's definitely been the hardest point, but they get to stand there and, and look at us graduate, and you know, hopefully they'll, they'll be proud of me. And with so little time left, the new constables prepare a special oh, haka. Spot, if you can, on the ground, and remember where you are, because we're not going to have time to muck around. Anita Rowland has volunteered to lead the group, a task she's well suited to. My previous role was a branch manager. I looked after approximately 50 staff, hiring, firing, that kind of thing. Though this tough cookie also has a soft side. I think I've always been the one who cries at funerals or cries if somebody else is crying, and you feel what they feel, and this is your way of actually being able to be in touch with that and um, touch people, and hopefully I'll do that in this job. With the graduation ceremony due to commence in just under an hour, time is not on their side. And by 20 minutes to showtime, things aren't looking too good. Time is not coming out. It needs to be stronger. The reputation of the wing is at stake, so it's time to pull one out of the bag. Let's go, guys. Switch on. With another wing about to graduate, Superintendent Beckett feels a sense of pride. What the recruits learn here will hopefully prepare them for a long and successful career. You see them become different individuals, different people. They actually grow. Uh, as they test themselves and they uh, grow in terms of putting themselves under pressure, they also grow because they become part of a larger team. The whole experience has just left me a much stronger person. I think I know I was born for this. Are you nervous, mate? It's going to sound funny, but I think I've become a little bit more responsible. Uh, maybe there was a piece of immaturity which I had to sort of leave, leave behind or get rid of. I think I've learned more of Kiwi culture and I can say I would be a better New Zealander now. I've learned to conquer my nerves and um, yeah, a lot of things. <laughs> Sorry. You come down here and the people that you meet, um, they only know you for who you allow them to see. And there's been a lot of, I suppose, um, barriers or, or personal traits that you get over, or you have to get over to be able to do this. And I've come down here and I've man managed to, um, I don't know, I suppose tackle a couple of hurdles I've never been able to before. Coming up, the 19-week journey is finally at an end, but have the graduates of Wing 223 got their act together?